Chapter 9.5, exercise 1 through 12. Again, we're in section 9.5 in our book, which has to do with se series, which is after sequences. And so here we have a summation, right? Each sum using summation notation, assuming the suggested pattern continues. So what we have here is the, to check out the pattern, we know that to get from negative 7 to negative 1, we have to do what? Add 6. To get from negative 1 to 5, we add what? We have to add 6. So our pattern, to continue the pattern, we would add 6 each time we get to the subsequent next higher term. And we could just add these together. If we take, uh, we want to do, we want to add each sum, we could add them all up. But what we're going to do is write in summation notation, which is this this sigma thing here. That's a summation notation. And we're going to need to find out what numbers to put in here. Well, we're going to start at negative 7 and go all the way up to 53. We need to figure out how many terms we need to get from negative 7 all the way up to 53. And since we're going up by 6 every time, we can take we can take uh, 53, we can take 53 minus negative 7, and which is going to be equal to 53 plus 7, which equals 60. So 60 is the number we span from negative 7 all the way up to 53. And to find out how many terms we have, we can take that, that 60 and divide that 60 by this. By the way, in the, in the language of sequences, which we did earlier, we would say D, or the common difference, is equal to 6, because we add 6 to each term to get to the next highest term. So we divide 60 by 6, we get 10. 6 goes into 60 10 times. So as far as the number of terms, we're going to have 11. As we start out, at negative 7, that's going to be our first term, and we add 6 every time, our 53 will be term number 11. Or, rather, we could go from negative 7 being term 0, for the first term, all the way up to term number 10. Either way, we're going to have 11 terms, and counting the first and last number. Now, I like to write it like this. I like to start out with k equals 0, and we're going all the way up to k equals 10. And this will give us 11 terms total. And we're going to put our starting amount, which is negative 7. And we're going to add to that 6 times k. And we just, and what this does, it will take 0. If we plug this in, we're going to get negative 7 because 6 times 0 is 0 plus negative 7, that's negative 7. That'll be our first term. And for the next one, we're going to have k equals 1. So we'll have negative 7 plus 6 times 1, which would be negative 7 plus 6, which would be negative 1. So the rule follows. But the way the book and its answers uh, worked this out was instead of starting with k equals 0, they started with, I'm going to make this in red, they started out with k equals 1. And they went all the way to 11. But instead of starting with negative 7, they started with 6 below that. So they took negative, uh, negative 13, which is negative 7 minus 6, plus 6k. And if you follow this red one out logically, it does work. I just think that this intuitively, the one on the left, the blue one that I wrote up, makes a little more sense because it's it has that first term of negative 7. So anyway, but either one would be a correct answer. <laughs> we'll go to problem number 3. And in this case, we're going to use summation notation. Again, we get our sigma out. And for this, we're going to start out with k equals 1. 
and we're going up by this would be like the first term would be 1 squared second term would be 2 squared so I'll put 1 squared 2 squared plus 3 squared and so on up to n plus 1 squared and so what we can do is we'll just put k squared here and we go up to which term? Well, the term n plus 1. So the thing is going to be going up toward <coughs> infinity. So we'll just box it down like this. Okay, there we go. Problem number 5. In this case, we have writing some using summation notation, assuming the same pattern continues. So, anyway, if we go, uh, what do we add to 6 to get negative 12? We're going to add, I believe, we're going to subtract 18. And if we want to get from negative 12 to positive 24, we have to add 36. And then if we want to get from 24 to negative 48, we're going to have to subtract 72. And so we don't have a regular arithmetic pattern, do we? So we look for the next thing, and that would be for a geometric pattern, which is, and uh, the section back on, on uh, sequences, we look for the common ratio R, which we get by taking A sub N over A, sub, the previous term, A sub N minus 1. In this case, we can take any of the two terms. So we'll take negative 12 divided by 6 and negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2 and if we use negative 2 as a multiplier this time 6 times negative 2 is, is uh, negative 12 negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24 uh, 24 times negative 2 is negative 48 so that seems to check out and so we're going to write our notation here's our sigma notation and for this, I want to start out again at k equals 0. And we're going to go all the way up to, well, in this case, we, we have a divergent series because we're continuing to go. There's no end to it. We have plus dot, dot, dot is continuing to go. So we're going to go up to toward infinity. And we take our initial value. Our initial value is our first term, which is 6. And then we're going to multiply that by r, our common uh, factor. And r, in this case, is negative 2. And then we're going to do this to the power of k. <clears throat> so we'll just take a little example, just a little experiment. If we substitute in 0 for our first term in the, in the series, negative 2 to the 0 power is 1. So that would give us 6. If we substitute in 1 for k, 6 times negative 2 to the first power, well, that's going to be 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12. If we go to k to the 2 power, we're going to have negative 2 squared, which is going to be 4, as in positive 4, with 6 times positive 4 is positive 24. So those three first terms we checked out verify that this is a pattern, a valid pattern. In a lot of these series, you can have different types of looking equations that end up being the same thing. So let's go on to our next set, which is an exercise 7 through 12, find the sum of, of the arithmetic sequence. And this word is arithmetic, looks like arithmetic, but it's an adjective, arithmetic. And to do that, we're going to find our common difference, which is d. And d is going to be equal to a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. So any two terms we can subtract. So if we take if we take this term here, we're going to say a sub n is 1, and we're going to subtract uh, our n sub n minus 1, which is negative 3, we're going to get, that's going to be d, 1 minus negative 3 is going to be 4. And we can see, indeed, that if we go ahead to each term, by adding 4 to the subsequent term, to, to, to create our subsequent term, we're going to have, it's going to work out. So plus 4, plus 4, and so on. So we can just get a calculator. This is just six numbers. We can add these together easy, easily without, without a 
uh, without doing a sigma notation. We're going to do that anyway because we can and because that's going to help us for our future problems. Well, I'm going to start out with k equals 0, and we have six terms total. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to go up to 5. We're going to put our initial value here, which is negative 7. And then we're going to add our common difference, which is 4, times k. And that will give us our answer. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a calculator with the uh, T-Inspire CX calculator. And going to our T-Inspire CX calculator, we go to this, this menu next to this 9, which is our book of different operations we can do here. And we go to this little icon here in the second row, fourth from the right, press on it, we get a sigma. So we're going to start out with k equals 0. And we're going to be going all the way up to k equals 5, which will be our sixth term. And we start with negative uh, 7, which is our first term. And we're going to add 4 times k. And if we do that, we get 18. But we could have also added, if we take, uh, like I said, just add the 6 together, right? So we can take negative 7 plus, what is it, negative 3, add 4 to that, we get plus 1, and then we add 4 to that, we get plus 5, we add 4 to that, we get 9, we add 4 to that, we get 13, so this would be 6 terms total, each 4 apart, and we also get 18, so that verifies our answer. And we're going to go here and mark 18 as our correct answer. There we go. Okay, problem number 9. All right, we have, again, a sum of an arithmetic sequence. And for this, how many terms do we have? We're going to have 80. We're going to start out with, I believe, let me see how we want to do this. We want to start out with, make a little neater one if I could. Not that much neater. Okay, we start out with k equals 1. And we're going to go 1 by 1 up to 80. So we're going to go up 1 through 80. And we're just going to call this k. <coughs> and we're going to have an, essentially an average. And if we go to our calculator, we have, we go get our sigma by pressing this key here to the right of 9. Enter. We're going to have k equals 1. And we're going all the way up to 80. And we're going to come down here and put k to the right. And we put in k, we're going to get 3,240. So I'm going to go over here for exercises, 3,240. Now what happens is, in a long time ago, a couple centuries ago, whenever it was, it was Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was a, a young student, was sent off with a long, supposedly difficult math problem of summing all the numbers from 1 to 100. And what he did is he came back uh, within 30 seconds, which is the correct answer on the slate. And what you can do for this is you can take the total number of terms, in this case 80, times the average between 1 and, and uh, 80, which is going to be uh, 40, plus, plus adding the 40. And if you work all this out, you're going to get 3240 as well. There are different ways of doing these problems. Okay, next. The next other problem is 11. We're given this is an arithmetic sequence, so we know we can proceed from one term to the next. 
What do we add to 117 to get 110? Well, we add a negative 7. And from 110 to 103, we add negative 7, and so on. <clears throat> and how many times are we going to need to do that? Well, we can take we can take 33 and subtract out our ending answer, which is 117. And to do that, we're going to get the same thing as 117 minus 33, which to do that 7 minus 3 is 4. 11 minus 3 is 8, so 84. So we have 84 that we're going to take care of dividing it 7 times. So, so 7 goes into 8, how many times? 1, 1 times 7. And we bring down this, we subtract, we get 8 minus 7 is 1, bring down the 4, 14 divided by 7 is 2. So 12 is going to be how many we have between that and, and uh, how many spans we have. And our common difference, D, is equal to negative 7. Well, to work this out, we're going to go to our sigma. We're going to start out with k equals 0. And again, we've got 12 here. And we're going to go up to, to have to have uh, 12 gaps between them, we're going to have to go up to, are we going to have to go up to 12? No, we're going to have to go up to 11. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so we'll have, let me see here, 1 to 13. I think we're going to have to go up to 12, aren't we? Are we going to have to go up to 12? Yeah, because we're going to need, 12, because we're going to have 12 space between 0 and 1 is 1, between 1 and 2 would be the 2, and so I think that's what we're going to need, which is going to give us 13 total terms. That's right. And for this, we take our initial term, which is going to be 117, and we're going to have to add uh, negative 7 times our common, uh, well, k. We're going to say minus... 7, which is our common difference, D, times K. And we can go to our calculator and put in, well, we could put plus negative 7K. We're going back to our calculator, we get our sigma right here, and we go from K equals 0 to K equals 12. And we come over here to the right, we get our starting term of 117. And let's make sure, I'm going to look at our problem here, make sure I'm not going to miss. Okay, minus 7k. So we'll go to minus 7k. And we get 975. So we'll go over here. Write in 975. That's our correct answer. The book says it is 2. And that's going to be it for this video lesson. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope it, you can see it ties back the vocabulary, the vocabulary of D, common difference, R, common ratio, and how to find them. And I hope the analysis and how to determine how many terms we need to span these to, to come up with these series. So good luck in all the other problems, and I thank you for viewing. Take care.